Hey, so today we're going to be talking about race and the death penalty from a sociological view. My name is Danny and I'll be presenting this to you. So a little bit about the general history of the death penalty in the U.S. and a little more broad. Uh, it dates as far back as the 18th century BC. Um, a lot of Greek and Roman areas were practicing crucifixion, impalement, drowning, beating people to death for various crimes. Um, the Europeans first brought it to the Americas and it was first recorded in 1608 when I believe a Spanish spy was stealing American intelligence, something similar to that. Um, the use of it in the U.S. gradually rose from the 16th to 19th centuries, but it definitely peaked in the 20th centuries. Um, and then over the past 25 years, we've seen a pretty sharp decline in the use of capital punishment. So let's look at the history of race and the death penalty in the U.S. specifically. In the early 20th century, 89% of executions were of black men for the rape of white women. Now let's think about how white men were persecuted for the exact same crime. Or let's say if a white man had raped a black woman, how would he be punished? Uh, he would probably be fined, maybe be imprisoned, maybe receive both, but how is that fair? You know, a black man would receive capital punishment, but a white man would get fined. So less than two tenths of, two tenths of a percent of white men were executed for murdering blacks from 1608 to 1989. In more concrete numbers, that's about 30 cases. In all those years, only 30 cases. And in the modern era, the criminal justice system is more focused on the murder of white people, meaning more people are getting persecuted for murdering white people than for murdering black people. And in 1987, the Supreme Court was kind of recognizing this. Society was recognizing it and wanting something discussed, something maybe done about it. So in 1987, had a debate. Um, are racial disparities valid concerns? And le the legitimacy of the death penalty was upheld. You know, the Supreme Court said it is what it is. There's not racial disparities and we're going to continue using it. We've got a few charts to look at. This one considers the past 25 years across the U.S. Uh, executions by race of defendant and executions by race of victim. So if you're looking over here on the left, you're going to notice that whites are the majority of executions by race of defendant. When you're looking over here, execution by race of victim, again, is whites. Now, I know these colors... Um, colors got a little confused but you're more so supposed to align with uh, this over here when looking at both charts and another thing to point out is past 25 years of course this is all states all regions all sexes this is not nobody in particular this is across the board there are more whites for execution by race of defendant and whites for execution by race of victim now what second blacks here blacks here and here Blacks are very, very, I don't want to say they're close, but that's who we consider more when we're talking about capital punishment. That's, I think, more the group we're specifically looking at as being discriminated against. This slide, we're just looking at Missouri. I thought it'd be interesting since that's where I'm assuming most of us are based out of. Of course, CMO is. Um, so we're looking at executions by race of defendant and executions by race of victim. Again, we have whites with the majority and blacks um, in second. And over here we have one Native American, which is a little outlier, but it's just a little something interesting to look at when considering your hometown or your area where you're from. In this slide, we're looking at the past four-ish years across the United States. I thought we should do something more modern than just the past 25 years. However, again, it's interesting to see that whites across the board receive more executions by race of defendant and executions by race of victim. And again, we're looking at all states, all regions, all sexes. So what's really the social impact of race and the death penalty in the U.S.? Well, the U.S. is the world leader for incarceration in general and for over-representing over minorities in the prison population. What I mean here is that we have 483 white men per 100,000 prison population compared to 2,841 blacks. 
Latinos fall somewhere in between, but it's similar for female and male. If you're a white male or white female, there are way less of you incarcerated than there are for the same black female or male. Um, so let's look at some things that might contribute to the overrepresentation. Um, we've got four different categories we want to look at. The juvenile justice system, the racial ethnic bias that those minorities receive, um, barriers to parental advocacy, and system labeling. Uh, socioeconomic conditions is something we discuss pretty often. Those low-income jobs, the lack of job, job opportunities, and the fewer community service support systems play a huge role in where somebody's future might end. Uh, educational system plays a role in all aspects of life, I think, especially when we're talking about the death penalty and racism in the criminal justice system. Um, inadequate early childhood education, high dropout rates, lack of cultural education, and families also, huge, huge role. Um, a single parent, economic stress, limited supervision, those all play roles in how an individual proceeds through their life, and might they commit a crime and end up in the criminal justice system? Might they receive the death penalty? These are all things to consider when looking at the background of somebody who is in this position. Talking about social, talking about social impact again, in 2011, 55% of death row inmates were white, um, which is a little skewed because though they counted a lot of Latinos as white and that can get a little mixed up, but 42% of them were black. And prosecutors actually opt for white jurors more often than blacks because blacks might be more sympathetic towards the death penalty and might be less supportive of it. And the criminal justice system is controlled by whites, so the blacks' voices aren't heard, which just creates further and further bias. How might we solve this issue? I've got a few suggestions. Um, I do believe we should diversify the justice system, meaning the white population should not be ruling the majority at all times, so more races' voices are heard. And to enforce the rules, to even out races and juries. Um, I mentioned in the last slide that often prosecutors will opt for white jurors over black jurors, and that simply isn't fair. I mean, we're seeing it time and time again. More blacks are receiving the death penalty because the blacks aren't in the juries to, I guess, defend their voices when it's been said and it's made clear that they're not supportive for the death penalty. And I mean, I'm, I don't want to say it's simple, but to make the racism issue simple enough, eliminate the death penalty. That can eliminate all of the bias within this issue.